While the world watches North Korea compete in the Olympics, North Koreans are mostly watching state media. But it's not all just drab agitprop. Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il, was passionate about filmmaking and believed in the power of the cinema to unite his country. His movies were big military dramas, and they had messages of duty to the leader embedded in nearly every frame. The state was never wrong, and its leader never made mistakes. Kim Jong-un, by contrast, loves the small screen. Under his rule, state media has moved away from the communist epic and into more intimate family dramas that air every night between 8 and 10 p.m. After that, the power goes out in Pyongyang. To understand more about what North Koreans are watching and what the government wants them to think, we arrange a screening with Jean Lee. She's an expert in contemporary North Korean television, something she picked up while working as a journalist in Pyongyang. Because this is a country that has so many rules, and if you disobey the rules or break them, the consequences are really dire. Is there a consensus in North Korea then that when you watch a television show that this is a model for how you're supposed to behave? I think North Koreans understand that they need to watch these to look for those clues, but these lessons in how they're supposed to, how to be a good citizen are wrapped up in these really entertaining dramas. The first show we watched was a primetime sitcom called Our Neighbors that takes place in one of Pyongyang's newest high-rises. It's kind of like a communist friend. Everyone's in everyone else's business, and they mostly hang around an elevator, which is a relatively rare thing in North Korea. At the end of the second episode, the neighbors rush home to watch and celebrate a rocket launch on the news. I think is an amazing scene because we've had a couple of years of a lot of provocations, right? And this one, so this would have been in December 2012 when they launched this long-range rocket, and they call it a satellite, but it's really a, a test of ballistic missile technology. We see from that exchange how closely they pay attention to the news, and then we get to see that the propagandists are like, you need to treat this like a party. You need to get up and dance and sing and celebrate. One of the things I noticed there was that there is a power outage. Is any acknowledgement or the acknowledgement at all that there might be problems like a power outage? I mean, is that common in North Korean television? I wouldn't say it's common, so that's why this is so unusual. And this is something we've seen with Kim Jong-un. He would be really critical, and he would call people out for uh, mistakes that they've made. And now we're starting to see that reflected in the dramas acknowledging where things fall short, and then giving people the tools to overcome it. <laughs> in Sunset in the North, the manager of a mine is confronted with a choice between the old ways of doing business and the new order. I love that the woman is the one who's the most knowledgeable here. Better than like watching a lot of American films. It's mostly aimed at people who still feel stuck between Kim Jong-un and his father. North Korea actually has massive amounts of mineral. They're sitting on a gold mine, literally, of minerals, but they don't know how to extract it. There seemed to be this conflict between like old smelting techniques, I think it was, and wet smelting, which is the new smelting, and that seemed to stand in for a larger cultural issue. Like, is, is that true? It shows the, the frustration, I think, that the leadership has, or the leader has with people's unwillingness to think outside the box. And perhaps that was the way they were under Kim Jong-il. And now he's like, listen, this is a problem. You need to take risks in order for us to move forward. This is kind of a way of saying, listen, in order for us to get to that point where we have a success, we need to make some mistakes along the way. Don't be afraid of it. Kim Jong-un is also a big sports fan who believes in its unifying and nationalistic power. In the series Small Playground of a Primary School, 
A member of North Korea's internationally successful women's soccer team moves to a small village to coach an elementary school. You gotta get that one. That's, that's on the keeper. One of the only times I think people actually see North Koreans on any sort of stage is during the Olympics. Like, how important has that sort of worldwide exposure been to Kim Jong-un? North Korea is under so many sanctions and isolated in so many ways, but sports is one arena where they can still compete and be exposed to the rest of the world. So he really sees the potential for sports diplomacy. We're seeing him take advantage of that now with the Olympics in South Korea. We watched like a combination of like Dangerous Minds and Bad News Bears. It seemed very familiar to me. Uh, you know, a young teacher comes in and teaches kids new ways and they go on to win things. Uh, yeah, they're like a motley group of misfits that she brings <laughs> together. Yeah, it's a very like, familiar theme. What is the state trying to say with this? This was, has been a huge part of Kim Jong-un's campaign. Sports are seen as one way to bring your country glory. All propaganda has a meta layer. The state is always, in a way, talking to the state. Jean believes Kim Jong-un's work on the small screen might be his way to differentiate himself from his father and show his vision forward. So he's really been trying to convince the people that, hey, I'm watching out for your um, quality of life. You're going to have more fashion, you're going to have cell phones, you're going to have a lot of computers, TVs, tons of food, which is something that we see throughout TV dramas, even though they have a chronic food shortage. It's propaganda, after all. And also, the other thing that's really noticeable is the demographic. The stars are much younger. He's a young guy. I mean, Kim Jong-un is only in his 30s. And if he's going to rule for decades, he's got to win the loyalty of that younger generation. 